whole episode is really about getting a native green gecko Godzilla from here into there. But I have to find him. Man, this dude's living the vida loca, man. Look at him. Jay chilling. Caught red-handed right in the act. So I just did a session. It's like day four in my week of bulk into 84 kilo. I am riding a bike without a helmet. I know. Naughty. My helmet's just like way too small. I need a new helmet, but I thought I'd risk it today. I mean, I'm not lying. I ride home. I ride every day without a helmet. I know. I know. I know. I know what you can say. Safety first. Yep, I'll get a helmet. Like if you think I should get a helmet. So day four, fuck my body's sore. Like honestly, everything's sore. The only thing I could do today was abs. So the core 100 GHDs with some lower back extensions in between. Quick sauna, Dunsky. That's it. So yeah, that's it. Quick ride home, have some food, relax, with some Netflix. All the reptiles are sleeping, so that's good. We're going to bedtime, except for the forest geckers or cows, obviously sure they're out causing the havoc. But yeah, anyway, yeah, just day four. Swim tomorrow. See this? Kofar flowerings. Perfect for the native geckos. Just break the stalk off, take it home, put it in the enclosure, and they can just get at it when they want to. So I was just about to place some of that stimulus, and then I found this little guy. Oh, the real kawa. Out during the day. Not too sure what he... Not sure what you're all about. I think he's getting some... Oh, look at that. He's about to shed. Oh, there he is. He's right. Here he is. Hi, mate. Here he is. Uh, I'll leave him to it. Just getting some sun. Not to disturb him too much. But anyway, let's, I mean, sorry, let's get some enrichment in there. So part of the maintenance is always providing fresh brows. So I'm going to give some, some of this larger pithsporum just to put in for the forest geckos so they get a bit more greenery in there while everything grows in. Because right now it's just quite brown. Things take time to grow, but just a bit more greenery. We'll chuck it in there, see how it goes. All right, I've got my piles of enrichment. So my flowerings from the Kofi. Even this little pit has uh, some flowering, so I'm sure they'll crack into that. All right, let's get it in there. Oh, so these guys, we're gonna get all this greenery. So get some Kofi. Still a few flies in here, which is good. They can't get out because I actually, um, oh, quite barbaric. So I actually rip off one of the fly, uh, one of the wings off the flies. Not always, if I can, and it just makes it way easier for the geckos to get them also makes it way easier for me to do this. But I mean, I always have fly availability for them, I suppose. A lot more uh, enrichment, things for them to climb on and enjoy. A lot more greenery. This here, they should be getting some nectar out of these flowerings, which is good. I'll just pop that here. We are also going to give this a nice little mist. And then we're also gonna add uh, Godzilla in here if I can get him out today, because Godzilla has been fighting, I think. And he's got some scarrings on him. The rest, uh, I think it's because the Royal Kawa editions. The other green geckos seem to be fine, but Godzilla, I think, is the odd one out. So I'll put him in here because he does just fine with the frost geckos in the past. Is there anything in here? Yes, there is. Look at that. Oh yeah, grumpy. Oh yeah, Greg's grumpy and he's got his girlfriend with him. Okay, that's right. She's definitely I saw some action going and she's looking plump, so we'll keep an eye on her. Oh, come on, Greg. Actually, you know what, Greg? Oh, nah. I won't disturb them. They're nocturnal. Get in there. Let's get some moisture in there. So we got some misting. It's going to be a hot day today, man. Very hot day. Oh, good. I normally mist three times a day. Twice minimum. Because sometimes I'm not at home. Obviously, I have a job. And I'm at work. But I definitely get twice a day. And there you go. Good mist in the morning. And if I am home all day... Oh, is that a moth? Oh, yep, that sucker's... Nah. Oh, yeah, we gotta try to catch that guy. That's food. Let's see if we can get Godzilla out. The reason why I know they've been bullying Godzilla, because this is Godzilla's favorite hide, and I pulled out two of these guys, two of my rock cowers out of it. So, these guys, these two can go back in, claimed his hide, which is totally fine, but it just means that Godzilla is now elsewhere. They're nocturnal. Where would he be? That's the question. Doing just fine. Could be the young one actually bullying him, to be fair, for all I know. This little guy could be the bully. He's looking plump. I can't see him, I can't find him. I'm just gonna have to grab him when he pops out. So anyway, let's give them their enrichment of the Ko-Fi. Gonna plop it right there. I know, that's like the cent centralized location. These guys also get a mist. Light mist, all the plants. Down the bottom, on the base. 
fill up your dish. Always water, man. It's getting hotter. It gets super hot here in the summer. Yeah, they need a lot of water, a lot of moisture. Make sure they still have access to water, whether it's a mist or it's a little dish. Also, from a distance, look how much nicer it looks with the green in there and the little co-fi flowerings. Do you know what I mean? Like, it just makes everything look so nice and green and popping. Dropping, popping like it's hot. So a lot of you have been asking for tadpole videos. I've put in some links into this video up top, you'll see. There's some links to some tadpole videos, basically how to raise tadpoles, they're super simple. So have a look, see if it uh, tickles your fancy. Otherwise, here is a dapple, the Cunningham skink with Sav, the blue tongue right underneath. So this is the only way I can actually watch them eat, the Cunningham skinks. I mean, sometimes they'll eat in front of me. The male definitely will, the bigger one right there. Um, he'll eat, for example, live food, but this one, she's a vegetarian, you know, it's official. But eat bugs, but not that many. She'll walk right over the salted fly larvae. She'll bury her head into the mix. Banana berries, she loves mescaline grease, as you can see. And she's just stalled because she knows I'm here, but I'm just showing you guys that. Yep, they love their greens. So here I am, cutting them skinks. Honestly, they're so grumpy, eh? I'm looking for a sad. I want to get her up and just make sure she's all good. She loves to borrow, so I have to kind of find her. She's always in a different spot as well. Quite interesting. And she is a good borrower because blue tongues are good at borrowing. Okay, with skanks, cutting him skanks. So she's over there. They're both in that corner, but her, um, but with her, it's like, okay, where is she today? Honestly, it's really annoying when I can't find her easily. Sometimes she's there with the skinks, she wakes up with them. Oh, there we go, look at that. Absolutely ridiculous bed location. Sleeping, I'm sure. I'm sure. The reason I'm getting her up because I kind of want to make sure she's all good. So I'm just changing this bin out, giving a nice little wipe down for the one of the, my leopard geckos, my morph, my albino morph, tangerine tremper. You'll see him in a sec. His name's Ike. To clean them out, obviously. But also very important for hygiene. Now, really weird. These two, well, not these two. Two of my leopard geckos, Ike and Icky. Icky is my natural or wild type. She's gone off black soldier fly larvae. Sprinkles are still eating them and smashing them down, which is weird. They used to love them, and now they're not eating them at all, and they're only eating mealworms, which I find really strange. But, hey, this is animals for you. They go through their peaks and troughs. Sometimes they like something, sometimes they don't, just like human beings. Fresh pap towels. Now, I keep my leopard geckos, well, two of them, really basic. Tub system. Sprinkles gets a whole enclosure because, like I said, Sprinkles is mine. I'm looking after her. It's a friend's. By active enclosure. This is a lot of floor space for a leopard gecko. So Ike on his own gets a two hides. But I also put in like egg cartons in there just for him to climb around, explore. So I'm just gonna throw this in there. I don't know, maybe you'll like to. He's quite small. He could probably fit in that actually. Uh, obviously, water, fresh water, two dishes. I've just got him because he doesn't like the light, he's kept in the dark. I mean, leopard geckos are nocturnal, say what you will. Fresh D3 powder. And what I'll do is I'll give him a top up for his humid hide. Right, just so you can see, gently put it there. What I'll do is I'll put in some fresh spacker moss. And what I do is I also make sure that's nice and moist. This is the humid hide. This is gonna sit over the heat, one heating area. So essentially he has a humid hide, a hot hide, and a cool end, as you should. And actually the, and this needs to move because this is the hot end where humid hide sits. So it stays humid. That will be there because that's the cool end with the water. That can just kind of go there. All right, oh, food dish. We'll get him some mealworms today because I think that's what he's eating or in the mood for. Let's see what we got here. We should have still some mealworms left over. Yeah. Now I know what you're saying, mealworms aren't a great staple. Well, we do mix it up. If my crickets do a good job, also the soldier fly larvae, well, they've gone off those. Then I also give them locusts. Yeah, waxworms is a treat. Just depends, really. 
and also silkworms if they're in season good bunch if they're available so this is Eki. he is a morph like i said tangerine trimper looks very different fantastic colorway but let's get him in there i'll just put him here for now and obviously this is Eki, my wild type she's a female she's really really good size actually she's looking really good really plump really healthy let's see if she gets some natural sunlight look at that gorgeous gorgeous girl yeah look at that all right and let's get it back in her house so i'm just transferring the crickets into a clean tub because it's been a few days so hygiene with crickets they stink they're messy and i want them to breed it's getting you know i'm in desperate stations now i've got two egg laying tubs all ready to go i think the third one's ready but that's what we're going to check today so they're going to go from their old container old tub into this tub so let's get them out all right first things first their water dish this apple that i just ate but they can finish it because it's fresh lots of moisture ah i need to get them a tub don't they an egg laying tub all right hold the line call up all right i found one not as big, but it will have to do in the short term. Because technically, if they've laid me three lots of eggs, surely that's enough. Surely that is enough youngsters. So I'm going to give them this one. That's the size there, full of cocoa fiber mix. I've just uh, sprayed the crap out of it. Uh, what's next? All right, fresh. Let's get a bigger, let's get a better angle. There we go. You can kind of see the whole thing now. All right, so fresh egg cartons so they can actually get in. Very important. So then that's one option. And I kind of do that so that they can get in. Here we go. Should be good. All right, let's transfer these suckers. We got to do a count as well, because last time, how many did we have? We had, I think, 15 or 17. 17, I think. Um, that bit of carrot is still looking pretty good. Let's put that in there. Now, I've added cat biscuits to their diet because apparently it's really, really good. It just means that they are um, really high. It's good quality cat biscuits. It gives them everything they need and stops them from being carnivorous. Keep the males. Males very important. That's one. That's two, that's three, that's four, that's five, 16, and it looks like they've eaten one. This is a half a carcass. That's fine, that's fine. I'm happy with 16. You know, one could have died due to old age or depression or sadness. Either way, we're, we're still at a good number, I think. Now we're gonna check this tub, I'm excited. What I'm, what I'm looking for, team, is ex uh, evidence of eggs. And look at that, yep, see all those little, it's hard to see, but all those little white cocoon, long cocoon things, like little rice granules, that is all cricket eggs. So yep, they've laid in this and it looks like quite a lot. So that sucker's going in a, into incubation. So I'm going swimming today. It's day five in my first week of doing the real bulk and sulk program. Today's just a chill recovery day. So I'll probably do like 20 laps, I'm broken. Yeah, freestyle, some breaststroke, just get the muscles moving, the body moving. Swimming's fantastic for recovery. Especially if you do like a lot of weightlifting or a lot of functional fitness or a real high, like a lot of high intensity exercise, it's really good for your body to recover. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm going swimming. Tomorrow I'll do a little bulk session. I'll probably do uh, maybe, yeah, maybe chest again. Yep. So I did chest on Monday. Maybe I'll do chest tomorrow. That's five days later on this day six. So I'll just do like two, three different exercises of chest. So I'll start with bench, maybe incline, decline. I'll do some. Uh, to climb push-ups i'll also do some uh, chest flies or dumbbell bench press and then sunday will be in just a full rest day nothing not on sunday but i love going to the pools because then i do what like i do 20 minutes in the water maybe a little bit less maybe 15 minutes unbroken laps and then i have like a steam and a sauna or one or the other and it's just honestly you feel fantastic afterwards I'll tell you what man yeah fucking steam room today man got me good and they're like for just under 15 minutes man heart rate was racing i thought i was gonna pass out so i thought well, you know what make the executive decision get out of there have some water it's time to go but yeah 20 laps steam room done now i gotta get home and sort all the geckos gotta get the food check the fire trap and then tonight yeah get ready for the nocturnal guys I suppose give them some oh and the misting as well afternoon mist of course but to be fair he is cathemeral in nature which means he will and might come out tonight especially if it's warm i've seen godzilla out at night actually more often than not so we'll see give these guys a good mist maybe they'll lure him out for some fish powder so cute how she thinks she's hidden that's literally all you can see honestly so silly here let me help you here we go all right so i can't wait to just be here when godzilla is out and about so i have to kind of pull him out now so 
I'm going to gently pull out the loose brows because I need to replace it anyway. So it's a good timing because I need to get Godzilla out and transfer them to the other enclosure. I think there's some bullying happening in here. So I transfer these guys out gently. I mean, the Ko-Fi, I'm sure they had their enjoyment out of it. It's looking pretty sad. I'll get some nectar today anyway. I'll top up both enclosures. But now it's a combination of getting out all this loose brows, catching any geckos that are potentially going to uh, escape or with the door open. I mean, none will. They're not like, they're just, they're pretty chill, to be honest. They stay where they stay and they're um, pretty easy to manage. Now, this is the tough part. They're removing things, removing hides to see if he's in these hides, where he is. I guarantee the Royal Cowers will be in here. Gentle, gentle, ever so gently. Yep, there's one. And I just leave, to be fair, I just leave the hide in there. What I'll do is I'll get everyone out first. And you know, he could be somewhere really obvious. He could be in like this hide that's right here. God, I've got so many. The problem is I've got so many branches in here now in a good way. Not in a good way, if you know what I mean. Getting everything out, I have to be fairly gentle. Yep, that's fine, because I have to put everything back. You know, you don't want to disrupt this. To, uh, you know, I'm quite lucky I can still do this to an extent. You don't want to get to a point where you're disrupting too much. Ah, uh, there's the other green. So I can see him. I can see the other youngster. So I don't necessarily need to grab them. But what I do need, potentially, is I need this stick out of the way. This is a blocker, I'll call it. That one there is kind of doing nothing, so it's going to be a rearrange. Maybe uh, it's a good opportunity to also add some additional levels if I need to. So one real car is out, the rest are still in here. No one's ever in there. All right, this is the one that I need to kind of, uh, kind of need to see first if he's in there or not. No, okay, good. So that guy can stay. Some bottom pieces first. I have to be careful, man, because I have had real cars like tucked in deep. But I put it out in the open anyway, so I can keep an eye on it just in case. Green geckos. Oh yeah, I'll see if I can get him. Oh, he's he's quick, man. Too quick. Maybe we start down the bottom. Let's see what we've got here. Tunnel, empty tunnel. Okay. Oh man, I'm doing it now because it's hot. It's actually fucking hot. I put a t-shirt on. And this is the thing with Godzilla, right? Like I've had I've had instances with this guy, and he literally. Here we go. Let's just get this. I might have to rearrange some hides if I have to. It is what it is. The thing is, otherwise, I'm never going to be able to get him out. That's the problem. Yeah, I can always reset the hides. That's not an issue. Who's in here? No one. Okay. No one at all. Is anyone using anything? That guy can come out. Yeah. Right. We're just going to have to cut things. Just get one gecko out. But you know what? It is what it is, man. These are things you have to do. You have to do these things. I've got plenty of these cable ties, so that's not an issue. That is not the issue at all. I need to cut this one. Oh, no. He can come straight out. I know that I've got nothing in here. Double check. Yep. Just leaves. I don't know why they don't use that one, man. I might, it's a good opportunity to maybe re, I suppose, put the hides in different positions because they're obviously not using them where they are now. They're good little reset, you know, what those two branches are doing. Nothing really. Look at this. That's a great opportunity for somebody to be hiding in here, but there's nothing in here, which is, that's a shame. I would be hiding in there if I was a gecko. Okay, this is cool. I'm going to show you this. This is a raw color. Look at that. Very deep in this. Now, my problem is, is old mate down there. Is Godzilla down there? God, I hope not. I can't get him out of there. Let's wait till night time, and even then. I think he's down the bottom, man. That's my best guess. I don't want to move any of this stuff up top. I don't really have to. What I need to do now is burrow through the leaves and see what I can find. Okay. Problem with geckos, man. All right, gotta get these leaves out as well. Yeah, just a full, just a full reset for one gecko. This is the thing, man. You have to do this as a gecko owner. You have to check up on them from time to time and make sure they're all good. That's a useless log. Do you know what I mean? At least the leaves, the leaf litter. I need to find him. That's the problem. And he'll be somewhere really annoying. I guarantee it, like right in the far corner. And you know what? I'll pull everything out if I have to. I will. Because I know where I've seen him. I've found him in some odd places. And to be honest, I can't even half the I haven't even found half of the raw colours. Sometimes they all just like bury together. Because uh the, and this is the thing. Oh, that is a spider egg sack. I don't like that. What spider is that? So what's next? Planted stuff I leave. I can take this out. That can stay. Oh look, fly. Oh, look at that piece. All right, let's get this gecko out because he's in the way and I found him. A little green stuff, a little jeevy. Look at him. He's looking plump, man. He's looking good. Get that out of the sun. It's like one of the easiest ways to maybe because the thing is, Godzilla could be out. He is a green. Can't pull out that log. I saw that. Oh, I found him. Yes. Yes, I found him. There he is. Godzilla. Thank God. Okay. Found him. He's all good. He's active. He's warm. Now it's time to transfer him and get everything back in. Look at him. Little cute boy. Hey, Godzilla. Hey, mate. Hey, mate. I'll put him somewhere separate. Oh, actually, I can put him in here to be fair for now. But he's getting a new home. Now put it, now to put everything back. First things first is I'm going to put a couple of hides down the bottom because um, these are, I don't know, I think they're useless. 
up top, but I'll put a couple down the bottom just to kind of give the real cowers some more hides down bottom. Maybe they're not feeling overly covered or protected, but lots of leaf litter. My golden rule, lots of leaf litter. You can't go wrong. Leaf litter, large pieces of bark or wood that can cover them. Basically lots of stuff for them to climb on, hide under. Do some bark in the back. There we go. That looks pretty good. I don't know where that youngster is, but I found Godzilla and that's all that matters. This hide is going back up here. Just tighten it in the back. Ah, you know, the things I do for these geckos, I do like this big log, so I do want to keep them in there. Oh, it's long, man. Yeah, it's a good it's a good length as well. If I can get it in that corner, I might just have to. Quick, some quick adjustments. Get yourself an axe team. They do wonders. There we go. Look at that. Down the size real quick. I can just get the sucker in there. I know where you're at. I know what you're going to ask. You're going to ask, Max, are you going to Put in more fresh browse? 100%. Always browse, always fresh browse. Lots of branches. We've got one gecko less in here now, so technically one less branch to share with, but still you want to give them ample opportunity. I do like this combo. This combo is going in. And I kind of like making all the tracks kind of join so that, you know, they can climb, they can start here and climb here. They can get into there from here, from here, go up here and then go up further up to the top if they want. Optimum It's going to put a few more branches at the top, so they have optimum optimum basking options basically what you want to do is you want to create almost too many hides so that a they don't battle or compete they have plenty of options i do like to include the ponga logs endemic to new zealand and kind of up here once again tracking up so you can climb up there climb up there man how did i get how did i fit this all in these are going to be key for basking options up the top and i'm happy to keep it oh gonna have to place them perfectly there we go that's nice and secured and i know what you're thinking you're thinking Max, how does he get from there to there? There we go. You almost, oh, for God's sake, hang on. I don't actually like that. Look at the afternoon mist. All right, so where does this one go then? This one kind of has to go kind of like something like this. Green gecko is really a boreal. Royal cows not so much. So the royal cows will probably take all the basking options sort of at the medium range to lower end. So they'll just pop up cryptically when the sun gives them the opportunity. This is going to go, oh, maybe, I'm, maybe it's a bit overkill. I don't know. I do need another aerial piece. Yeah, so you know, look at that. This is what I want. All these flowerings, man. So this grows in my property, so this is actually perfect. I can use this. It's got flowerings. I break it off. Natives. And I kind of get a mix. So I'll get... I don't actually know what this is. I'm sure someone can tell me. If they know New Zealand flora and fauna. This is flowering. It's weird, eh? This was flowering like a week ago. Now not so much. But same again. I like this stuff because it's like... This is pits bottom. Bigger leaves. Oh, there we go. There's some flowerings. That's what I need. Yep. That. And then, we'll put this in, there we go. Basically, that's how it needs to look. Dense, lots of hiding areas. Let's get, let's get old Stumpy and Green back in there. And I actually forgot about Stumpy's bloody hide, but essentially, he's already in there. Oh, um, still have to figure out what he to do with his hide, but I'm gonna get this little green, Northern Green back in there. So, I'll just get you involved, there you go. You go run and play. Stump my start, I'll keep you in your hide, so he's in here. And I kind of need to put him in a place where I might put Stuntmeister's hide just in here because it will sit. But how I do it is that's his new hide. So he's got the exit point here. He can climb up here. He can climb up there. He can climb down there. And he can go into the joint if he wants. And as always, the afternoon mist. Here we go. They get the afternoon sun. I'll go get them some flies. Throw in a few flies so that they've got something for the evening. But nice little mist. Everything's looking green, plush. Reset. Goal achieved. Godzilla's out. Yeah, back in. This enclosure is actually way easier because all I'm doing is the brows, misting, some honey, and that's it. So it's actually a lot easier than the other one because I don't have to take anything out. I'm not taking any geckos out. Um, I am just replacing some greenery, some brows, especially for Godzilla's entry. There's still heaps of flies in here, which is nice, but I'm just replacing this old stuff, making sure there's nothing in it, and getting the new stuff in. This enclosure is actually going really well. It's already growing its own greenery, so a lot easier than the other one, some would say. That's old, but oh, there he is, little cutie boy. Come here. Getting his afternoon sun. Man, the forest gecko is the one of the juveniles. In, oh, juvenile. This is one of the juvies. Beautiful animal. Look at that. What a species. Honestly. Camouflage. Oh, so Godzilla. Oh, Jesus. Oh, there he is. Look at that. Perfect. Look at that camouflage. You know, you'd be walking in the wild, you wouldn't even see him. But Godzilla was doing way better with the forest geckos, and I don't know why, but they're not, they're not as big as bullies. Weird. Anyway, so same same process for the forest geckos. I'll maybe get them something a bit different. So we've got some Kofi, plenty of greenery to use. So just a few strands for God, just so Godzilla feels comfortable. I mean that's the whole point, right? Just for old Godzilla to get in there and feel like he's got some green around him. He's not too 
alienated by all the brown. All right, real simple. You just launch that in there. This one's at the top. There we go. Look at that. Doesn't need to be overly great. Oh, there goes a fly, but that's all right. I'll catch more or I'll give them more. Crap's going good. That's it. Oh, no, you're not getting away. Absolutely not. There we go. All right, and rinse and repeat. Misting. Always misting. There's a fly there, but um, some of them are wingless. I talked about one of my episodes. All right, there we go. Nice mist. Um, it is the day for, or should I say weekend for honey? I might do that tomorrow, so I'll just give some honey some, some enrichment. It's a really good afternoon mist. Let's get a little cutie pie in there. So this is Godzilla. <laughs> Too eager, there he goes. Um, couldn't even show you him, but I have, a, I have a soft spot for him. It's my first, like, green gecko I ever got, and that's why I wanted to move him. I want to make sure he does really well. I'm obviously, I care about all the geckos the same way. But I do have a soft spot for him because he's my OG, my first one. Let's see him. Hopefully he's going to enjoy that, like all that space. Brand new enclosure, or pretty new. And he's just in there with four frost geckos that are mainly nocturnal and hopefully not giving too much grief. But we'll see. Stay tuned. Here we go to that Godzilla and forest gecko basking together. Cute. Well, that's it. Look at that. See, they live in harmony. For some reason. He's going to love this enclosure.